Hello, welcome back to another Impact Review at the Impact Lounge. I'm your host today, Adam, and as always, I'm joined by Ro the Great. Hello, Ro. Hello, Adam. How's it going, man? It's going really well. And uh, for the usual subscribers to this page, uh, you might have uh, seen some of the posts by BQ, who's uh, obviously been missing from the Impact Reviews over these last couple of weeks. We're here to hold down the fort, and uh, today's show might be slightly different as well. Because there's been uh, a little bit less activity on the page, we might get into a few more news topics as we go along as well. Uh, but we are going to obviously be mainly doing the, uh, the obviously the review of the show. Uh, and don't worry, we're not going to give you any spoilers at all about the upcoming tapings. Um, uh, OK, so before we dive straight into it, uh, the one thing that we usually do do is we, we do like to give out uh, a shout out to some of the other podcasts out there who we feel are doing a good, positive job of promoting impact. So as always, we'd like to shout out to our colleagues at The Heelcast, who are do a fantastic job there promoting impact and do their weekly review. And also Andre Corbeil, who you can find on Twitter. I would say you can uh, just search him on there. It's spelt like it's uh, said, but that doesn't really help us. So <laughs> I'm going to do my best to spell it. It's uh, Andre, A-N-D-R-E, Corbeil, C-O-R-B-E-I. Is it double L row or one L? I can't remember. One L. One L. There you go. You can find him on Twitter. And once again, he's another guy who comes up with quite a good uh, bit of news on impact and is a uh, very pro. So before we dive into the show, um, we're, we're going to be looking back at it. And obviously, this is the last week of the Ottawa tapings before we get on to the Florida tapings that some of you might have read spoilers about. And as I said, we're not going to discuss those today. Uh, we're going to just uh, talk about this week's show and maybe a few bits of news that have come up uh, on, on your streams. So uh, before I do start, I'd also like to thank you all for the kind comments that you've been giving Ro and ourselves. Uh, we really do appreciate them. It makes it makes us feel worthwhile. What we're doing is, is going along the right lines. So please uh, don't don't give us uh, lip service. If you're enjoying the show, drop us some comments. And uh, what we can do is if, if there's any questions that you guys have got, we'll be more than happy to answer them as best as we can. Right. OK, so uh, if this is the first time listening, make sure you do subscribe. We hit the 3K subscribers this week, so that's great news. But uh, if it's on YouTube, subscribe on there. If it's on Podbean or any of the other methods, make sure you like our page and drop us uh, uh, some comments, as we said. Right, so uh, into the show. And it's going to be an interesting show this week for us as well, because I know that Ro and ourselves have a bit of a differing view on what we thought of it. So, Ro, over to you. Overall, what did you think? I thought it was an excellent show um, for it being the last one of the Ottawa tapings. You know, normally we, we've we gotten in the past where it's the last uh, episode of the tapings. And, you know, it's just kind of like thrown together, meld in because they're looking forward towards the new set of tapings. But uh, they delivered from top to bottom. You know, for me, I was like, finally, this was a show that we were waiting on, you know, after, you know, late last year, so many, oh, well, there was that one match that was good from this particular episode. I knew, you know, we were due for a, a great show, and I felt like this was that show. Yeah, well, uh, the only reason I said to you the, uh, before we started tonight that uh, I, I didn't enjoy the show as much as yourself is that basically this was a wrestling heavy show, uh, and I'm one of these old school fans who likes a bit of storytelling and although the matches did go some way to tell us a story there was I can't remember any bit of backstage stuff or any progressive segments you know for example we didn't hear from Chandler Park this week uh, or Congo Kong or Jimmy uh, Jimmy Jacobs so that's that's the reason why I didn't enjoy it because it was a wrestling heavy show and and I have worries that if this is the direction that they're going in you know, I, I do worry about it a little bit because I do like a bit of storytelling other than just, you know, walking backstage and seeing people. I know there was a lot of vignettes, but, you know, I, I prefer some of the segments that you see between the shows and that. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I can't remember any this week. Was there any? Yeah not, yeah, not at the top of my head. And I agree with you. But the thing I think what Impact needs to do moving forward for them to thrive and be successful, they got to be different than your traditional wrestling promotion. Like I said, I agree, like, you do need some kind of segment. Sometimes it's fine. But having a show like this every now and then, this is what some fans want. You know, we don't need all that, that you know, the backstage stuff all the time. Like, you know, we get it in some situations when you're talking about an ongoing feud or even having the vignettes. That's fine. But 
I, I just think it's they impact needs to mix it up. And I thought the way that they did this show was great. Now, like you said, if they go in this direction, it's like, you know, you do want some kind of storytelling. They just got to be um, creative and mix it up here and there. Give us different things. I think you're right on the mixing it up and not trying to copy, you know, let's face it, WWE, which is what everyone does try to copy and it's what they're they're held up against. But at the same time, I think they can do something different. And and for me, it's where Lucha Underground really worked is when they were doing much more cinematic felt segments outside of the ring. And I think that's that's something that, that Impact could do more of. And, and this show, it just felt they didn't do it. I mean, I'm a perfect example. Just even a couple of weeks ago, you know, the, the Sammy Callahan and uh, Conan bit, uh, you know, I thought was excellent, you know, and it's stuff like that they can be doing. And there was none of that this week. It did feel like we've run out, not run out of ideas, but we've run out of content for, for you know, this last show before next week's. And and it felt like that, although the matches themselves were excellent. So so anyway, let's let's dive into the matches and uh, we'll start, obviously, with um, it was obviously the EC3 Matt Sedell. I think that was the first match on tonight's show. So we were just talking about this before we started. What, what did you think of this, first of all? Um, it was nice to see, you know, a feud finally culminate. Um, we got Seidel and we got EC3. And the dynamic that was played was, you know, you got the cocky EC3 and, you know, the almost there Matt Seidel. And, you know, they're going back and forth and, EC3's cockiness led to, you know, him eventually losing to Seidel and Seidel captures the grand championship. But the thing that I thought that really stuck out is, and and not to, you know, I know, I know BQ had stated that he had like the rules of the grand championship. And I've always been a believer that, you know, use those rules in special ev- events. But, you know, why weren't we get, given matches like this from the jump? Like, you see, if you just treat it as a mid card title, we can have matches like that, and they're not limited by the judge or the the round system. But uh, just back to the match, um, it was great, a uh, great feud that they've had, and uh, Matt Sadell, the new Grand Champion. Yeah, well, well done, Sadell. You know, he's he's done some good stuff since he's returned back to Impact, uh, which has it's been must have been close to a year now he's been back. Um, but yeah, the one thing that I enjoyed about the match is that. They continued, you know, all the choking storyline as a visual tell during the match. And I thought EC3, I think we've we've talked about this quite a few times, that he can work with big guys and he can work with small guys. And when he's in this program, he's worked very, very well. The one thing I didn't like about it, and I do have to, to point this out, was that he hit the one percenter at one point in the match and didn't go for a pin, which I, I didn't quite understand. He just let Sadal roll out of the ring. And just a, a couple of moves later, that was him. Uh, he was pinned himself. But... Overall, it was it was a good match, and uh, obviously, you know, this looks like it's the end of that feud. And and to be quite honest, although we know EC3 are at the new tapings, you know, last night there was some news, wasn't there? Uh, we saw EC3 appear on the WWE Network. Uh, do you want to tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, I I was just going by Twitter. I didn't watch myself, and I happened to see a video where they were um, interviewing him. And look, I'm not one of these people that you know, is going to bad mouth talent that wants to go over there. Cause I understand, you know, for a lot of wrestlers, that's the dream, you know, they want that moment. But however, with the situation, how impact does their tapings, um, I'm hoping somewhere down the line or, you know, foreseeable future impacts able to structure the contracts where it's not so much like a no complete clause, like, you know, the other company has, but have something that protects them because now, you know, I, I, I don't know how with these next set of tapings, how far into it until we see EC3 written off. But us as Impact fans, we got to watch this guy on our screen that we know is no longer on the, our TV screen competing the other company. Like he could show up at the pay-per-view tonight and, you know, it's just kind of like that's just egg in the face on Impact. So it's just something like, and I understand, you know, they want to be in people's good graces, but they got to look at it too. You you got your fan base. I know you want to build on, you know, the fan base, and, you know, um, grow your audience, but some people aren't going to follow you. Even if you can cater, pander to them, do whatever, like at the end of the day, if they're not behind you, they're not behind you. And what Impact has to do is you can be cool about things, but don't bend over, you know, because... <laughs> They're not you. You're 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 you know putting your making yourself vulnerable in some some cases. 
I, I think you're right in that uh, the no complete cause is something that they should uh, really have a look at. Uh, the w one thing I think they have done, which is right, is with regards to gimmick infringement or, you know, being allowed to keep your name and those kind of things. And, and I think the reason why it was important to take that out is that they could be missing out on talent who don't want to be going and building a brand for themselves in one company thinking they're never going to be able to take that and they're going to be stuck with with impact you know so it does allow emerging talent to learn their trade on impact and i know impact doesn't want to become a breeding ground for for people just a stepping stone you know before they go on to wwe but what it does do it, it takes away that that potential issue in some wrestlers minds who think you know i'm not going to go to impact because it will stop me eventually going on to wwe with what i build it allows them to to really be you know free for all within impact so I don't mind them the keeping the, the, the gimmick, but you're quite right. I think that they should maybe little, you know, at least say, well, as long as we've got things in the can that you know are going to happen over the next three, four weeks, he shouldn't be appearing on WWE television. But anyway, we'll see. What was interesting is they did refer to him as EC3, but on all the press uh, releases I saw, uh, he wasn't referred to as EC3. There was EC. And then a space three, <laughs> which, which, which I don't know if it was just a typo on the press release, but it seemed almost that they are keeping some of the gimmick, but changing it slightly. I, I don't know if it was a said just a typo, but it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, it also yeah, it, 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 no, all I was going to say is you don't have to do it. Maybe if you can structure it, and, and I think what makes that be what makes it so tricky is because they do the taping so far in advance. But maybe you can do something where if they ask that for release. They can't appear on TV until they're written off TV. That way it, sa it saves the company some. But, I mean, I'm sure, you know, if they were to even try to entertain that idea, you know, the fear of the backlash and that they got to kind of get out of that line of thinking. The, the folks that aren't, you know, down with impact aren't going to ever be down with impact. We, we get it. You know, we see a lot in the comments. Oh, you know, this show's trash, but yet <laughs> the talent goes over there oh man you're so great man i i've been following your career forever and that's fine but you know just try you you know improve your business relationship but don't make the company you know seem like you know they're vulnerable and like you were saying you know they're not a breeding ground if anything impacts giving wrestlers an opportunity to fulfill their potential yeah some people have fell through the cracks it happens you know you there's only one show and you got all this talent you and you know with a lot of the changes you know in regimes it's been hard you know to follow up but impact is giving you know talented you know talent the opportunity to come over there bring their creative ideas and a chance to shine you know a lot of companies i mean i, mean, I don't follow every anything else but you know i don't think some of these other companies they're getting that same opportunity whether it's you know you come in and you got veterans at the top and they're you know clogging the the main event scene so it's un, you know hard to break through or whatever the case may be. So that right there is attractive to some wrestlers. However, you got to be careful too because you don't want to get wrestlers that's like, okay, well I'll just go to Impact, you know, get my name on uh, you know out there, and then hopefully you know the the other company gets me. Eventually, they're gonna sign a person that wants to make their name in Impact, wants to make money for Impact, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's gonna happen sooner or later. But the key thing is. You know, keep doing what they're doing, trying to, you know, build good relationships, structure and all that. And it all come together. I, I think you hit the nail on the head. You know, it, it's about trying to build good relationship with the indie circuit. And I think at the moment what they're doing is quite exciting and they're doing it in the right way. Uh, you know, EC3, they built that character from, from the ground up. You know, he was when, when he was in Next the first time or NXT the first time around. You know, we, I know he won, you know, the pseudo competition to win nxt but you know Derek bateman character failed so they can do it and they've shown they can do it with someone like him and hopefully you know it'll continue to to grow with other characters going forward anyway we're not going to dwell on that too much but anyone who is listening who who has a view on on, on ec3 turning up uh, already on wwe after this match uh let's know what you think and, and how potentially impact can can work with talent going forward you know to to avoid this again so uh one title change. Then we went straight into another match. Uh, and this was, I was going to say, one of my favourite matches of the night. I, I don't know what it is. I really like Laurel Van Ness. And I know this is another talent which people seem to know eventually is, you know, has asked for their release, etc. But I think she's been brilliant um, since since going back into the ring from her kooky character. I think she's been really good. And this match was, once again, I thought very, very good. 
Yeah, I, I agree. I I like the evolution of the character because in you know when watching this, it's just funny because when you think, I want to say almost about two years ago, you know these two um, wrestlers, you know they were honing uh, different gimmicks. You know you had Ali kind of being the assistant, and you had Laura Van Ness being the rich girl, and then you know months, you know years of uh, character progression. Now we get more of a serious Ali. And then, you know, we, we had Laura Van Ness for a minute where, you know, the crazy bridezilla. And then um, she seemed to turn normal for a little bit. And then, you know, she, you know, fell back into, you know, where she is right now. But I love this match. Um, I thought, you know, nice back and forth. It told, you know, a bit of a story of, you know, the history of these two wrestlers being Ali and LVN. And I think in this particular instance... I wouldn't have mind a DQ, but I think the way that they've done it, you still can continue the feud because I, you know, LVN relied on a belt shot to retain the knockouts championship. But I thought it was nicely put together, um, great knockouts match, and I'm looking forward to seeing these wrestlers wrestle again. Yeah, absolutely. And and the one thing I'll say about LVN, well, it was two part, parts of this match that uh, one I liked and one that I had a bit of a problem with, which I'll come on to in a second. But all the way through this match, before. It was bizarre. I was thinking it all the way through, thinking that in Impact Wrestling, you never see wrestlers put their foot on the rope to break up a pin. And I, I was thinking it, thinking, why don't you ever see that? It's always people kick out finishers or, you know, the, it, they, they roll out the ring or so, someone pulls the referee off and you don't see the foot on the rope. And then literally 30 seconds later, LVN did it. <laughs> it was nice to see. <laughs> but it was just one of those bizarre things I noticed. But the thing I didn't like, as you quite rightly alluded to, I didn't, wouldn't mind the DQ finish that she used the belt and, and the only reason why I, I bring that up it just seemed out of character for LVN uh, for Laurel's character we've never seen her cheat before not that I can think of anyway she's always won the matches fair and square as far as I can remember you know I know that there used to be interference from Sienna or whatever or Maria back in the day but since this evolution of the character I can't remember her cheating to win a match or needing to cheat and it just seemed a bit out of place for me I, I think they could have come up with a better creative finish somehow I, I'm not sure how whether it would have been a ref bump of some sort or something like that but yeah um, I think as a wrestler she's excellent as well she's got a really good build you know she's tall she's athletic I think that she if she does end up in WWE eventually uh, wherever it is that she's going I think that she has got a really bright future uh, and it's a shame I'd like to have seen her stick around in impact although at the moment obviously she's still with us and she's still champion uh, Ali did a good job and uh, yeah um, Excellent match, and looking forward to seeing where they go next with it. Uh, any other comments before we move on? I th you know, the one thing, and I was trying to remember, I just couldn't remember, at least in Impact, the last time I've seen, you know, knockouts, a uh, knockout using a belt shot. I'm sure that somebody in the comments can dig up, you know, an instance in, you know, a match maybe a couple months ago, but that, I think that was the thing that kind of, it's like, damn, when, dang, when's the last time they used a belt shot? But, um, yeah, they, they, I think there was a ref bump. I think the point, um, I want to say LVN, she had pushed Ali, and Ali bumped into the ref, and it kind of startled him a little bit where he turned, and then that's when uh, LVN was able to utilize the championship and hit Ali with it. But I, I, I like to see these these uh, wrestlers wrestle again. Um I like this feud. This is a great, great feud. Yeah. So, so after that, um, we went to um, Dan Lambert, Lashley coming to the ring with uh, KM and Toe uh, versus Moose. And uh, once again, these guys going at it. The only thing I'd say about this match, and we'll get your thoughts in a second, but uh, a lot of the content in it, like um, Lashley going up to the top rope and Moose drop kicking him off it, it feels like we've seen it a hundred times before, especially that one that one move, I think he elim eliminated him for the, uh, the the Rumble match where Eli Drake won in that fashion. And we saw the same day in Mexico. And it just seems like a spot that these two guys have done time and time again. You'd like to see something different. Um, obviously, this time, the big story was, was KM getting involved and in trying to get him to cheat and those kind of things, uh, which obviously led to the ending. But I mean, the match itself was was fine. Uh, but it didn't feel like there was anything new that these two guys were wrestling over. You know, it just seemed yet another match between the two with nothing really different in it what were your thoughts i think um and i don't know if you've ever seen uh this match i want to say it's off of a uh, summer slam 92 is an old match 
But and where I'm going with this is uh, sometimes when you have uh, wrestlers that have great chemistry and familiarity with one another, they'll kind of work the same spots. And what I'm referring to is uh, Bret Hart and Mr. Perfect. I remember I seen a series of matches from them. You know, one was at a pay-per-view and then one I forgot the other event, you know, a long time ago. And they would do the same spots. So then as I would see the third match against these two, it's like, all right, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. And the same thing here a little bit. Although it was nice to see uh, Lashley pull off a running a running hurricanrana, not a standard one, a running one for a guy of his size. Like, that was pretty impressive. Um, the The one thing I think, and I had spoke on this on Twitter, I think once Lashley leaves, I could see Moose adopting the spear as a finisher because I think the problem with the game changer breaker – like he does a, uh, he already does a spinning clothesline, and then he has one as his finisher. So it's kind of, you know, it doesn't make make too much sense. But as far as the match, it was good. And the thing that I love the most is, is even though we've seen in this feud Lashley dominate, Moose finally got the win, and I think this is going to give him that rub that catapults him into the main event now. Just picking up on your spear thing, uh, from memory, I think uh, after, in the post-match, Moose did do a spear, didn't he? Um, and, and it was was a really good one. So I can see him adopting that as well. And another thing, uh, there was a foot on the rope moment. <laughs> it's like a bus, isn't it? You wait for one and then suddenly uh, a couple come along at the same time. Uh, yeah, but the, the finisher, obviously, it was all about KM. This this was all, all about KM and Lashley breaking away from Dan Lambert and Dan Lambert getting his uh, comeuppance. But I thought it was really well done. And I absolutely love the fact that... Um, uh, what's the guy's name? The guy who always gets beat up every week. Uh, I keep forgetting his name. Uh, he ran down at the end, you know, with the neck brace on. I, I know it's a bit of a running joke that every week he gets absolutely, uh, you know, blasted by whatever wrestler is there. But, uh, yeah, it was it was good to see almost a culmination. But having said all that, the problem that I have with it, if this is the end of this kind of storyline of ATT, it seems like quite a poor payoff. It seemed very underwhelming. If this is it, if this is Lashley moving away from Dan Lambert and we don't hear any more about it, it, it just seems like we've had nine months, maybe a year close to, of having this story building, building, building. And all that happens is Dan Lambert gets put through a table. It, it seems very low key, not the wrestler. Yeah, it, it's it's one of those situations, though, I believe, like had uh, Jared still been around, for example, maybe it would have went into a different direction. I think the problem that occurred was, you know, the guy that was behind it, he's no longer there. So then someone else takes part. And like I said, I think um, the new regime or, you know, when they knew, you know, at these tapings, they were getting a new regime. Maybe they were saying, let's just end this. I mean, it's unfortunate because it was like, you know, God, dang, this guy is, you know, the guy who, quote unquote, ended James Storm's career and, you know, all these other things. And yet that's that's the big payoff. But I'm just happy that Moose got the rub. Um, I hope KM isn't lost in the shuffle from here, because like I said, I think with his character, you know, there's more that they can do with him. I mean, even if you just have him as a solo guy, you know you know be the local bully you know he can go and beat up the x division guys you got a storyline there i mean there's other things you can do with him and i think that was the one unfortunate thing i was thinking about was you know if this is it you know what happens next with km so but it, it would have been nice had had we not known that lashley you know will be departing from the company too i'd love to see him and moose in a tag team i mean we're, we're hurting for tag teams could you imagine those two guys yeah absolutely it would have been uh Hulk Hogan and uh, Ultimate Warrior X, wouldn't it? Two, two big guys <laughs> absolutely dominating everyone. Anyway, uh, yeah, so as you said, we don't know where the storyline is going to go with, but I've got a feeling that this could be the end of it or certainly uh, very close to the end of it. I, 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 but I do hope that they give it a bit of a send off. And what I'd like to see is something along the lines of the funeral of Aces and Eights. I don't know if you remember that that, that part. Um, they did like a, a comedy funeral segment for, for the end of Aces and Eights. And I'd like to at least see something along those lines, some storyline, you know, out of the ring, not not a match, but, you know, a, a formal ending to the storyline, which if they don't want to continue it, I think the fans at least deserve that. So anyway, we'll see. We'll see what happens next week. All right. Um, going back to my problem again with the show that there was no talk segments, we, we went straight into another match, which was uh, from Pro Wrestling Noah. 
and it was uh, Ishimori versus Andrew Everett. Uh, once again, a bit random because we haven't seen Andrew Everett for quite some time. Uh, I can't remember the last time we saw him, actually. And he's in a title match with Ishimori. And uh, apart from the huge amount of green on display in the ring, uh, what do you think of this? For the little that we got to see, I thought it was great. I mean, the funny thing, and I, I was laughing with BQ about this, was, you know, once again, you know, we, we get this random title match, which, okay, but from a guy that we haven't seen in some time, you know, what what makes him worthy? And to piggyback off one thing that you said, I really think Impact should look into doing some kind of ranking system. So when we get, you know, some of these one-on-one matches or, you know, the knockouts, one-on-one matches, um, you know, there's some kind of significance to them. And then maybe they can display a ranking to show, all right, who's next in line, you know, for a title shot. But for the little that we got, this this was great. I, I wouldn't have minded if they would have showed the whole match. Um, I'm sure it's on the network. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, for the little that we got, these guys had some great chemistry together. Now, I know one of the other shows on uh, the Impact Lounge channel this week, uh, BQ, was talking about some of these promotion uh, sorry some of the impact shows going up on twitch you know super shows from from border city wrestling for example is one of them and i've said all along i think it's a really good cost-cutting measure to to have some of your titles defending at these shows so you don't actually have you know the ring costs the traveling costs all these kind of things and i don't mind them doing this but i think they have to be a big deal if you're going to do it and i don't think for one second that if this was an actual title match in nowhere uh, that these guys just, you know, were curtain jerkers and just came in and said, OK, we're going to have a match for the, for the X Division now. I bet you they had pretty impressive entrances. And I think that if you're going to use this, this kind of thing, you've got to show the entrances. You know, I, I really do think that it's important as opposed to just say, oh, by the way, there's a title match. We're going to show you a little some highlights of it because that tells you Ishimori's not losing that match. Whereas if you make it feel like a big deal, you have the entrances, all these kind of things, irrespective of Andrew Everett deserves it or not. Uh, at least you get to think, well, do you know what? This is a proper match as opposed to filler. Uh, and, and that was my problem with it. Once again, you know, Ishimori looks great. I thought Andrew Everett, it, he looks a bit chubbier than usual. I don't know why I keep body shaming everyone. Uh, <laughs> but but he, he looked a bit less toned as, as he has done in the past. Not that it makes any difference because he's still pulled off, you know, some fantastic moves. But Ishimori, once again, looks class. And that 450 splash, uh, best in the business. So by far. <laughs> yeah. So after that, as I said, you know, once again, straight into another match. You know, there was a bit of talk on, uh, you know, on commentary about what's coming up next. But uh, I think we went straight into the six sides of steel. Uh, unless I've missed something. Uh, I think that was the, the final part of it. Um, I didn't miss anything, did I? Uh, I think we did just go straight into the match, didn't we? Yeah, I mean, there was a, like a, throughout the show, there were video packages, you know, leading up to whatever the next match was. But outside of that, that, that pretty much is. And then they were, I think they recapped the uh, barbed wire massacre. They were just showing the highlights of that as well. Hmm. Uh, and once again, you know, that was another little problem that I have with the show. You know, that was such a big thing last week. And although they showed a little highlights package, it would have been nice to, to you know, have a celebration or something like that or, you know, Something with Coda backstage in their clubhouse, um, you know, just toasting and saying, that's them out of our hair kind of thing. But, you know, I can want all I want. It didn't happen. Right. OK, so into the main event. And we had uh, the three guys who've been feuding over the main event for the last well, quite a while since Bound for Glory. So, uh, yeah, let's go straight over to you, Ro. What, what, let us know what you thought about this one. Yeah, uh, before I get into it, there there was um, there was a impl- the sorry the words not not coming to me right now um but the the clause in the match is pretty much if Dario ah, oh my god I called him Dario <laughs> if El Patron <laughs> or I- Impact loses they're not allowed to challenge for the global championship uh as long as Eli Drake is champion um this was my favorite match on the card just because I wanted to see because, you know, we know the feud that Drake has had with Impact and, you know, the feud that he's kind of had with uh, El Patron. And I wanted to see if we were going to get the standard, you know, the Hills, you know, double team the face. And, you know, that's that's going to be the match, you know, them dominating the match. But everybody was engaging with one another. Um, 
the one thing I'll say, you know, with El Patron, you know, when, when him first coming in, you know, they made him look so strong. I mean, he seemed so unbeatable. And then in this match, and it was it was a nice change because, you know, seeing him, you know, taking, you know, the gravy train and, you know, being in positions where, you know, it looked like he had zero shot of winning. I mean, it was, you know, nice to see. But I, I like how they did the finish, too. And in a way, it's kind of, I kind of, it kind of makes me want to see Eli Drake in Impact Feud again, just because the way the match ended, th- like you would assume, like, you know, essentially Impact got screwed. So they would face each other, but with that uh, stipulation, there's the word that came to me, <laughs> with that stipulation, stipulation uh, implemented as far as them being unable to challenge Eli Drake as long as he's champion. I mean, unfortunately, we're not going to get that. But yeah, great match. Um, you know, now we're gonna see who Eli Drake moves on to next. I, I will say this, and you know, and I'll move it towards you. I know we've, you know, a lot of us fans, you know, as far as the Eli Drake title reign has kind of been just so blah. And it just comes to show you sometimes, like he's had a long title reign thus far. Sometimes length of title reign doesn't necessarily result into greatest title reign. Like there's been champions in the past who might have had been champion a couple months but it's been an excellent reign whereas you might have someone who's a champion for a year and it's just it's not as memorable and you know when looking when we look back at Eli Drake's you know title you know this inaugural title reign you know we're gonna look at it and history's gonna show like dang man it was kind of you know he'd always win by the skin of his teeth but uh great match great match I absolutely agree with you about the, the Eli Drake title reign there. It, it does seem like it's a really long reign, but as you said, that I think everyone needs a... What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, you got me at it now. I can't think of my words. <laughs> but, you know, something that they can say, you know, that, that was the highlight of my reign. Um, a, 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 a tent pole, a marquee match. That's the one I'm looking for, a marquee yeah. match. And he hasn't had one. It just feels like it's been quite lackluster, all of his title defences and... And some of them, he hasn't won by cheating. You know, he's won fair and square, certainly in the early days. But there's been absolutely nothing memorable there that you can say, oh, yeah, Eli, you know, in, in about four or five years time, if, if Impact's still going, fingers crossed, um, I don't think anyone will remember this title reign. It's a bit like Magnus's. You remember Magnus's title reign for the wrong reasons in that it was terrible. <laughs> um, I don't think you remember this as terrible. You just won't remember it. And that, that's the issue I've had with it. But you're quite right. He's, it's a, a long title reign doesn't actually mean a great title reign. I think people remember James Storm's 24 hour title reign more than this. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And there's the thing. And look, and that's why I think what's going to be cool is with the new regime. I, I really think sometime this year, Eli Drake's going to regain the, I mean, I don't know if they're going to change the name of the championship, but whatever world championship that impact has, I think he's going to regain it. And it's going to be better than what this initial one was. Cause like I said, and, and I don't fault, I'm never going to fall any of the wrestlers, but I think what happens is when you have guys in place and one cre- uh, creative group is strongly behind them, but then they're removing you put in someone else. It's it's no different than when you're talking about an employer and, you know, when someone at the top leaves and then someone new comes in, they're inheriting these em- easy, these employees. A lot of times they want to get their guys in anyways. So it's like, you know, say you, you know, you coming in and I tell you, hey, this guy right here, he's our guy. You might not see the same thing that I see. So I think that's what hurts the wrestlers sometimes. So that's that's one thing, too, the hoping with this new regime, this is the new regime that stays in place. Because, you know, you think about some of the departures, maybe that's the reason why, you know, they ended up departing. You know, the people who were in place beforehand had, you know, the highest faith in these guys, whereas the new ones come in, you know, they're not as strong as behind them as the previous. This happened a lot with uh, AJ when AJ was with the company. And I, I'm, where I'm going with it is when uh, Hogan and Bischoff, and I know that's like a sour note, when they took over, I don't think they believed in AJ. And I mean, hell, they had him try to be Ric Flair 2.0. So that, you know, shows you right there. But uh, as far as with Eli Drake, I, I think his next title reign will be better than this one for sure. Uh, that, that's assuming he loses it ever, of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, and I'm I'm over here talk, talking like like you know I'm just saying you know because I, I I don't anticipate he's gonna have a year reign. I mean he's had a long reign as it is, and you know the modern impact 
you know, I don't, you know, average people now who hold the world title and impact, you know, a good three, four months, you know, that's decent. I mean, it, it seems like he's been longer than that. I'll say his best match, at least for me, was the gauntlet for gold when he won it. I thought that was great, and yep. I thought that made him. Absolutely. Just going back to this match, a few spots I want to I want to pull out. Um, I thought once again the match was very good. I've really enjoyed Alberto. I know he gets a lot of criticism for his his off stage ant well, off stage antics, uh, behind the the curtain antics, all these kind of things, his personal life, and he's not a great baby face, I don't think, but. I've really enjoyed his time with Impact. I really have. And I think that as a heel, he's been even better. And he looks, he's, he's always professional in the ring. He, you know, he, he's just a good wrestler. So from my point of view, you know, I've quite enjoyed him. Um, this match, once again, I thought it was very well put together. There was a, you know, as with any cage match, you know, it, you've got to put, check in your disbelief at the door, you know, because they, they sit at the top of the ring, you know, for, for 10 minutes while the others fight in the middle of the ring and don't climb down. And then suddenly they jump down into the middle of the ring to try and perform a move when they could just jump to the outside and win, <laughs> you know, so you've got, you've got to put all those things in disbelief, you know, that's fair enough. But yeah, it was quite a creative way um, to, to end the match. The only thing that let it down, and it was something I wanted to bring up earlier on, but I forgot to, to mention, but the only thing that let it down, I thought was the camera work at times. The camera work seemed a bit all over the place. And even with uh, Adonis, grabbing Johnny Impact to stop him, you know, hitting the ground. Uh, they, they didn't seem to get the editing right to show you what happened. I know everyone knows what happened and the commentary sold it, but it, it just didn't seem like the cameras were in the right place for it. And it was a bit of a shame. Uh, whereas earlier on, I thought the camera work was excellent, especially in uh, the opening match uh, with for the for the Impact Grand uh, Championship. So, um, yeah, so it's a bit of a shame for, for the camera work, but overall I thought it was an excellent match and it was good to see... Uh, Eli Drake uh, win and it's good to see that he's going to be moving on to something else finally because this feud does seem to have gone on for a long time and it, it will just be nice to get him into to a fresh uh, challenger of some sort. Uh, where do we where do you think these guys are going? I mean I, I, I can see Impact and Alberto carrying on to, to feud. I'm guessing that 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 hasn't finished but as you say you know it, really it spells out that it should be Johnny Impact who's the one who's who's upset because uh, he's the one who seemed to got screwed out of it, as opposed to uh, Alberto. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, so I think that pretty much brings us to the end, or certainly brings us to the end of Impact this week. And uh, I, I'm guessing we're coming to the end of this show. But is there anything else that you wanted to bring up, Ro, before we finish today? Yeah, uh, well, first, let me just add, I think the two things we did make, miss were um, they did two flashbacks. I want to say the first one was... It was a uh, Joe ver Samoa Joe versus uh, AJ Styles. I forgot which pay per view it was, but mainly it's when Joe won the X Division Championship from AJ. So I recommend you know you guys go catch that on the GWN app. Um, I, I mean I, I want to say it was back in 0506. I can't mistake. It was really really good match between those two. You know those guys. You know when not saying that they're not at their best now, but you know when they were you know at their apex, I'd say. And just, then before, also, just before you go on, Rose, so just on that, I want to bring something up as well. That in the UK, they don't tend to show these flashbacks for whatever reason. But mm -hmm. it's a real shame that whenever we have these flashbacks, they always seem to involve people who are in WWE and popular, such as Joe versus AJ. It's just a shame that people like Christopher Daniels are forgotten about almost. Uh, because he was, when I first started watching him, or TNA as it was, Christopher Daniels was my favourite thing. Uh, and, and even up to when he departed, and hopefully he'll come back one day, he was my favourite thing about the show. And it does seem that these flashbacks are just trying to draw in people who are familiar with the, the work of these WWE superstars now. So, um, yeah, it's just a shame. Yeah, I just like to that. It, it's funny you say that because he was in the next match. Oh, right, there you go. As I said, <laughs> yeah. we don't get this in the in the, the UK, so I didn't see that. So what was the next match? Embarrass yeah, me, was, carry on. <laughs> no, no, it's all good. It's um, And it's the one that uh that really put TNA on the map. It's Triple X, which was uh, Christopher Daniels and Elix Skipper versus America's Most Wanted, which was uh, Chris Harris. Um, Some people might know him, unfortunately, as Braden Walker. <laughs> yeah and uh, uh james storm you know early james storm and um obviously the biggest biggest highlight if you haven't seen it is it's the six sides of steel the stipulation was i, I want to say the loser the team breaks up but um the biggest highlight of the match every impact fan knows this is when you have uh 
you get Skipper, he's walking on the cage and he does a Rana from on top of the cage. I mean, it's so sick, but it's just like I, when watching it now, I'm all thinking like, God, man, just the one wrong step, not that you wish it, but one wrong step. And I mean, that all can go wrong, you know, pretty quick. But uh, yeah, great. It was it is it, really excellent. Um, a lot of blood, you know, but it, it it was great. But um, as far as my closing thoughts on Impact, I believe this is gonna you know the, gonna be the last time we see the six sided ring for now, because with these new set of tapings, they're gonna be implementing the four sided ring. Um, I don't have that much of an emotional attachment to the ring, you know, ropes, etc. Um, I did think having six side side of ring made impact different from other companies because that was kind of like their thing but then again too that's associated with tna and we've seen that they're really trying to not so much trying to forget tna but really trying to present impact as it's a new company now so in doing that you can't hold you know be carrying on things that were associated with the old TNA. And I even think moving forward too with maybe some of the pay-per-views, I wouldn't be opposed to them changing some of the names and, you know, some of the match types. I mean, obviously there's some, like, I, I'd hate to see them do away with Ultimate X. You know, that that's one of my favorite uh, matches. There are certain matches you can keep. But I, I think if they're branding as a brand new company, you can't resort back to old TNA customs. So, and I think with the six-sided ring, that was, you know, one thing. So, um, you know, maybe we'll see it down the road once, uh, one day, but, um, yeah, this is, I guess the last time we're going to see the six sided ring. Yeah. But funny enough, I, I was thinking about that very thought myself, especially when they went to pro wrestling Noah, uh, you know, jumping from the six to the four, uh, it was something that, that, that kind of, uh, dawned on me as well. That would be the last time that we're seeing it in this show. Uh, but you're quite right on, on ultimate X. It's one of those matches that we haven't seen in a long time. I can't actually remember the last time that was actually used. Can, can you remember the last time we had an Ultimate X match? God, man, I, <laughs> is it, I mean, if I thought hard about it, it'd probably come back to me. The only one I can remember, and I don't remember when, but I just remember Trevor Lee. Um, t t someone got the title, and then Trevor Lee just took it from them, and then that's how how they won. I, I want to say it was sometime last year. Maybe it, it involved DJ Z. If, if I'm not mistaken, hopefully they don't do away with that because I think that's the, the match that put uh, the X Division on the map. But, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised because, like I said, you got a new regime coming in. You know, there's certain things that they see that are intact that they might not be fully behind. So if they're not fully behind, they're going to do away with it. I mean, there was a, a rumor. I, I mean, I don't know, but that they might down the road scrap the Grand Championship. And if that's true, you know, and, and I, I guess the, the point was they were talking about, you know, having so many titles and, you know, when you have st too many, you know, sometimes more is less or whatever. I forgot what they use, but, you know, this company needs a mid-card championship. Unfortunately, not everyone can work in the X Division. You know, they, they've told us in the past that X Division means no limit, but you look at most of the guys that compete, they're essentially cruiserweights. I mean, they probably don't weigh no more than, than, 220 pounds you know and that's just by you know the weight that they are announced at so i think a mid they do need some kind of mid-card championship i mean if they keep the grand championship i think that'd be lovely i mean you could bring back a television championship but um you know we'll just have to wait and see yeah um they might introduce something called the internet championship bearing in mind the platforms that they're going on to but there you go uh, i think <laughs> i think you're quite right and uh, let's know what your thoughts are funny enough i, I asked um well, I did an interview with KM this week, and it's not up on the channel yet. Uh, BQ uh, has been very busy. I'm sure he'll upload it very shortly. But one of the questions I asked him was, because uh, he, he books his own promotion, and uh, he said uh, one of the things he wanted to do was introduce a secondary belt in his promotion. Uh, so, um, unfortunately, the guy he asked uh, came up with three variants of a hardcore title, and he said he'd never book that guy again. But uh, a very funny interview if you get a chance to listen to it this week. Uh, yeah, I, I think they most probably will keep the Grand Championship, but I think that we can forget about the judges going forward. I think that's that's a, a Billy Corgan idea of the past. Uh, talking of which, uh, if you haven't seen the, the uh, empty arena match uh, from NWA, Billy Corgan, that was actually quite good. And uh, you never know, that might be something that, that we see a partnership going on down the line some point. Uh, and I certainly would welcome that. I, I don't think there is as bad of blood between Billy and Anthem as, as some people had made out at the time. So we'll see what happens down the road. But 
I, I'm guessing for the time being, uh, thanks once again for tuning in. Make sure you do subscribe to the channel because then you can see things like our exclusive interview with KM, which is coming up, and uh, all other uh, news coming up. But for the time being, it's uh, goodbye for me. It's uh, good night to you, Ro. All right. Take care, you guys.